As the GBSU football team sees their season come to a close after a tough loss against Wayne State this weekend, the team can take pride in what it has accomplished on and off the field this year as it says goodbye to 13 seniors. Joining us is head coach Matt Mitchell. And coach, let's start with that. 13 seniors, particularly on the defensive side of the ball, they have a lot to be proud of for their four-year careers. Yeah, I thought our defensive guys, you know, had uh, great seasons individually, a lot of strong performances, probably all conference performances out of those guys led the way, you know, and with only two seniors on offense, really proud of them. It was kind of disappointing that we had a couple of guys Austin Parity and Jalen Harden that due to injuries could not participate in our last game. And uh, we're very disappointed with the outcome of that game. We did not play very well um, in all three phases. Um, some things cost us, um, spe you know, specifically just lack of a passing game a little bit offensively. The kickoff return was big and, um, you know, defensively giving up that first touchdown um, was tough too. So didn't play particularly well and, um, you know, had some opportunities in front of us to maybe uh, extend the season of our seniors. So I'm very disappointed that we did not give those kids an opportunity to play again and that was their last game. It was a really tough game against Ferris a couple of weeks ago. How did you feel like the energy was this week as you got ready to try to come into what essentially was a playoff game? It was. Uh, you know, and I think, um, you know, I, there's a lot of factors probably that played into that. Certainly the bounce back wasn't there. Um, we came out of the gate um, and took responsibility for that. We also um, got pretty banged up offensively uh, down the stretch, and specifically that game lost some guys, which limited some things and made, made things a little bit more difficult to try to create that spark and energy that you need throughout the course of preparation, obviously on Saturdays too. And uh, just found our defense out there, uh, probably throughout the course of the season, was out there a lot. And uh, felt like the cumulative effect of that, along with you know the Ferris emotion of the Ferris, our defense probably didn't play as sharp as it needed to be um, in that type of a game uh, against Wayne State. Talk about, and obviously injuries are never an excuse, but you right. lose Austin Parity in the Ferris <clears throat> game. You didn't have Jacob Miller. You don't have Devon Anderson really in that last game. So really three of your top four receivers out for that game. How much did that show up when you look at the tape on Sunday? Oh uh, yeah, I did. You know, I think that uh, Wayne State did a good job kind of knowing that and um, played a little bit more man, tried to lock around some newer guys, um, tried to get the ball to Brandon Wadley a bunch. <clears throat> he had some success also. There's some times, you know, some catches probably he wished he had back, some punt returns he wished he had back to try to be able to do that. but. You know, they pinned their ears back and they really got after us, I think, sensing a little bit of the blood in the water that we didn't have our full complement of people on the outside to burn them. And they had six sacks and we give up six sacks on the day. Uh, that combination of, you know, we couldn't really affect their quarterback effectively. Um, I think that was the, probably one of the big differences is they were able to get home to our quarterback and we struggled to do that enough on the defensive side of the ball. The positive on the offensive side, once again, Arian kane Beasy, who missed a lot of time this year because of injury. But when yeah. he was in there, he really established himself as a good running back in the Gleak for his sophomore I think, you know, he did. You know, when you look up on the board in, in pregame, when you take a look at the yardage relative to carries, it's pretty impressive. You know, not a lot of carries, but a lot of yardage. Um, you know, I thought he uh, ran incredibly hard um, on Saturday, broke a lot of tackles, was downhill. Um, you know, never quite got that explosive touchdown run that maybe you need in that type of game when you're limited in terms of your offensive passing attack. You know, we were without Tariq Reed too, and um, so, you know, I think we had Bryce Young Walls kind of step in, do some things. He caught a couple passes and did some check downs and kind of what he does. Um, but, you know, we had to rely on Buck quite a bit. He got a majority of the carries you can see statistically. And I think, uh, you know, for a sophomore, having not really played a lot in 2018 with the missed time, as you mentioned, I thought he had a solid 2019 campaign. He sure did. Obviously, the season comes to a close now. So if you could give us some insight, what the message was to the team after that game on Saturday? Well, you know, we're uh, very disappointed. Um, you know, it, it uh, was an opportunity for us, like you said, a playoff game, try to get our way in. And I didn't, you know, we didn't have the... We, we didn't have the passion and the fire sometimes you need in those situations. I'm disappointed by that. And we've got a lot of work to do here uh, as we get into the 2020 season. So we'll uh, dig deep and very um, take a look at everything top down and try to do uh, what's best to try to get us back in, in championship level games. Because obviously we weren't, we weren't good enough in the games that matter. We can take a look at Ashland, Ferris, Wayne State, those championship type level games. We didn't come through with our best performance needed the most. So um, take responsibility for that and get back to work and figure out how to solve some of those problems. What are the uh, first few steps if you could mm -hmm. turn towards 2020? Yeah, I mean, I think at first is, you know, you, you, you go in-house, uh, you have some honest conversations. Um, with your staff and the players and you, you really take a, a deep dive into your people and take a look at your guys. And then you chart a path. Once you've had some good conversations with people in the building, you start to chart a course and a path. And then, um, you know, you, you look to try to develop the people in your building, develop coaches, develop uh, the players. And then you have to keep them mindful for adding some talent. You know, you've got to go out and recruit and add talent. There's a lot of different ways to do that. Some of that's through high school students, but some of that's through transfer students too. And so we have to take care of our people first in the building, and then we have to go out and see what are the pieces of the puzzle we need to make us a better football team in 2020. Well, Coach, for the most part, it was a lot of fun to watch you guys play on Saturdays. Appreciate all your work. Appreciate you coming down each and every week this season. We'll talk to you soon. Okay, okay. thanks, Jake.